Stand by on the floor. Five seconds. Stand by, ready to fade up on camera two. Ready to cue him, ready to open his mic. Fade up on camera two, cue him, open his mic. John Foreman here. Today we have with us a man who has something very important to tell us. How we, as members of a community, may protect ourselves from radioactive fallout in case of a nuclear attack. Fred, uh, you told me before about your experience. Now would you uh, tell the audience a little bit about your background? Well, Jack, I, I have been associated with the nuclear experiments for perhaps 10 to 15 years, both in Nevada and in the Pacific, and mostly with an eye toward the effects of nuclear experimentation on human life and other life, but mainly human life and building construction with an eye toward protecting the American people from fallout. Mm -hmm. And this has been my primary goal for now approaching 15 years, probably. Uh, and uh, you brought with you today a film which uh, will expand this idea yes. and show us uh, some of the things we should know about radioactive fallout. Right. Uh, you've also brought with you this sign, <coughs> which uh, many of us see every day on our public uh, buildings. I hope that everybody sees it on the public. <laughs> well, perhaps you're right that uh, many of us pass it without seeing it. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about this sign, what this means? Yes, this is the uh, symbol, the sign from the Office of Civil Defense, which you will find posted on uh, public buildings, commercial buildings generally. And this identifies the fact that inside this building is a public fallout shelter. And when I say public, that means simply that it's a shelter that will accommodate a relatively large group of people. Uh, the, this shelter then will be fully stocked with all the necessary supplies and uh, everything that you need to survive a, a fallout attack and uh, the shelter the directions will be in there to lead you to the shelter now this is only one thing jack in the the entire program there are many other facets of uh, protection from fallout and i think you mentioned that i brought a film and i think if we look at that film that in more detail will expand on these things and clarify it for the people right we'll see that film right after we hear the latest news uh, Watson, Lamb, Spill, and it's difficult watching television here with the people pacing up and down the room, Sam. Yes, I agree. Why don't you like to sit down? She has been seem to be quite interesting. She looks a bit nervous. I don't think I'll bother. 50-50 chance. Oh, Give me a boy, Doc. Look. Uh, I had five girls at home all the time. It drives me nuts. I've got to have a boy. A football. Come on, Doc. Please. A football player. A football player. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a coffee, please. Coffee, please. Coffee, He's a nice boy. Well, he's a nice boy, but you still can't go out. <laughs> Do better than that, Doc. Okay. It's up to us. <laughs> right. Good luck on that. <laughs> See the cause of the trouble. Finally, where have you been? I was home. <laughs> home at a time like this. Well, I was. Your I wife is having a baby, sleeping. <laughs> Man, I agree. This guy is cool. <laughs> I've been pacing the floor. You're supposed yeah, to be here. I maybe six or seven hours. hours You're supposed happened. to be here. You're well, I see you at least brought her some flowers. What yeah. happened to them? Yes, I forgot to put them in water. <laughs> Come on, at least thank God you're here. Mom, can I go out? No, you can't go out tonight. Why does she have to have a baby now? It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just watch television, okay? Uh, over there. I have a ready light on the projector, ready to fade to black, and roll the film. The news for this hour. Fade to black, come up on the film. <laughs> Glad to see so many of you could make it. Our purpose here, as you know, is to find out how we, members of a community, may best protect ourselves against fallout radiation in the event of a nuclear attack. Now, we have three objectives. First, we want to understand the threat posed by a nuclear attack and its aftermath. Secondly, 
we'll see how studies conducted by the Department of Defense prove how essential civil defense is to our nation's total defense program. And lastly, we'll look at the civil defense program in action. Now, to begin with, it may surprise you to know that radiation is something we all live with every day. It's always with us. Like each of our millions of stars, our own sun is a nuclear furnace that shoots out showers of tiny particles along with invisible rays that we call radiation. In an average lifetime, a person might expect to accumulate radiation equal to about 10 rentgens, not enough to affect his health. We don't worry about these small amounts of natural background radiation. To protect against higher radiation levels, we must do two things. Keep our distance and shield ourselves. For as the amounts increase, so do the dangers. The amount of energy generated by a nuclear explosion is enormous. Near the crater area, there is almost total destruction from blast and heat. And now, large amounts of pulverized debris and molten earth are pulled up into the mushroom cloud. The radioactive atoms produced in the explosion join with the particles of earth and debris. The mushroom-shaped cloud forms and climbs higher. It now contains billions of highly radioactive particles. We call them fallout. The winds of the upper altitudes blow on the cloud, sending it in one or more directions. Some of the very light particles may remain suspended in the atmosphere for years and travel thousands of miles before landing. But the heavy particles drop to the ground within 24 hours. These are the most hazardous because they emit the largest amount of nuclear radiation. A hundred miles from the explosion, they're about the size of table salt or fine sand. Within an hour after a nuclear attack, fallout would begin to be a serious problem in the vicinity of any ground burst. Within a few hours, the threatened areas cover more and more of the country as prevailing winds expand the fallout in downwind patterns. 24 hours, 48 hours without shelter, millions would face death. Many people have difficulty understanding how silent, invisible rays, which cannot even be felt, could be so damaging. Our bodies are made up of millions of cells. They're the building blocks of our blood and tissues. When radiation penetrates the body, the cells are injured. Most of them can repair themselves if the total exposure over a period of time is not too high. But if radiation continues, the cells will be destroyed beyond repair. We measure radiation exposure in rentgens. If people received more than 200 rentgens within a few days, many would be sick and some might require medical care. 300 rentgens would cause severe radiation sickness or possibly death. And as we go beyond 300, the danger increases rapidly. But we are not without personal weapons of defense. One is distance. The greater our distance from the fallout particles, the less radiation exposure we receive. Radiation from particles 50 feet away, for instance, would not affect us as much as particles from a few feet away. You'd receive less radiation exposure in the middle of a tall building than on the top or bottom floors, because there would be more distance and physical barriers between you and the sources of radiation the fallout particles, which would cover the roof and the ground around the building. Only an insignificant amount would get inside undamaged buildings, unless windows are left open and there's a strong wind. And along with distance, we have the most important defense, mass. <laughs> 